Hey guys, Sean Carpenter here, Sean K. Carpenter from the All In Group, um, coming at you live uh, with with kind of I'm hoping the the weekly um, weekly series on different aspects of uh, what we can call self improvement, self development, um, reaching peak potential, uh, overcoming things, and just be you know find out what we're actually capable of and being that. So that, that's what this is all about. Um, if you're on here live, make sure to say hi. You can ask a, a question, a comment. You can disagree. You can argue. It's all good. Um, this is this is here for you. Um, if you're all watching the replay, whether it's on YouTube or on Facebook, uh, certainly feel free to leave comments throughout. Uh, I will get back to you as soon as possible on it. Um, so today what I wanted to talk about is something that's actually um, a very serious issue and something that's very, uh, very close to me. Um, very very important to me and that is that well it's kind of come up because somebody somebody very very important to me very close to me is struggling with depression on and off and uh, i came up uh, uh yesterday well it's come up last few days and it's something that i really really you want to be able to make a difference for and uh, because I've struggled with it myself, you know, over and over throughout the years on and off, it kind of comes and goes. And, um, the reason I want to talk about it is because it's largely misunderstood by a lot of people. It's very, very common and there's ways through it. And, that, and that's what I think is important. There's ways through it. There, there's ways to overcome it if we're willing. Um, you know, it's been shown, research has shown that nearly 20 million um, teenagers and adults in the U.S. suffer from depression. In Canada, it's about one in five people. So it's very, very common. You can call it an epidemic. And um, it really, you know, I think, you know, it's pretty normal for all of us to feel sad for a day or two or whatever. That's pretty, that's pretty common at different points in our lives. Uh, things happen. But when it becomes you know, kind of a constant state, this, this, this deep, deep sadness, this, um, crushing kind of weight that, that, that we feel, you know, it's, it's really, it plays havoc with our lives, with our entire well being, our spiritual, our physical, our mental, uh, well being. Um, when you are suffering from it, everything feels overwhelming. I think it's the best way to put it. Everything feels overwhelming. Relationships, work, uh, hobbies, interests, all of it. It feels overwhelming, at least for most people. And again, you know, you know I'm kind of going to give some um, uh, general statements, general symptoms, general experiences. And to be honest, everybody's experience of depression is different. There's different reasons for it. There's different um, symptoms. There's different processes and experiences. But I'm going to give you kind of a general overview here and some things you can do. Um, a lot of people, well, most people that, that suffer from depression end up isolating themselves socially. You know, they'll, they'll do what they have to, but then, you know, retreat to their own, their own place. Quite often that, that dark room, shades drawn, etc. Um, high function, high functioning depression is a little bit different, but you know, it has some similar uh, qualities to it. Um, it can be, honestly, it can be a combination of a number of different factors that lead to depression. So from... Uh, genetic factors, biological factors, uh, environmental factors, and psychological factors. So there's a lot of different factors or a combination of all of those things that can lead to it. And, and again, this is just based on research, based on my own experience, based on my own uh, teachings that I've gone through. Um, and I'm just noticing, uh, and I'm not sure actually how you say your name. I'm hoping I'm saying this, this right, is, is Raza has joined, uh, or Rasa. Um, Anyway, I, I do apologize if I'm getting that wrong, but you can let me know if we end up talking live, uh, talking together. So I want to thank you for being here. Um, and the thing with depression, it doesn't discriminate. It really doesn't. It can happen to any of us at any time, any age, any gender. Um, you know, it, it's really, so it's really important to understand that, you know, when you, when you see somebody um, that you know is struggling with it, or if you're struggling with it, it's very common and it, and it's it's unpredictable when it can happen or to whom it will happen. Um, you know, one of the one of the factors that's actually been shown. This is an important piece too, is that quite often kids that experience anxiety in their lives become depressed as adults. So there's some links to childhood as well. 
Uh, so some, some general uh, symptoms or, or characteristics. For a lot of people, it involves feelings of sadness that become overwhelming. Kind of, I mentioned the idea of overwhelm. The, the sadness itself becomes overwhelming. So that's one characteristic. Um, quite often, there's a loss of interest in in normal activities, in hobbies, in in you know day to day things, things that would normally bring you joy. Actually, um, there can be. Sorry, I'm just looking at my notes of things I wanted to talk about. Um, there could be problems with appetite, for instance. So you could, oh, you, you could not feel like eating at all, or you could actually overeat when you're depressed. It could be either or, or, some, or maybe vacillate between the two. Uh, there could be problems sleeping. So for instance, it can be very, very difficult to get to sleep or stay asleep, maybe wake up in the night, or you can oversleep. You know, so, so the temptation might be to sleep too much and physically feel the need for that sleep. So it's a very physical feeling, uh, a physical tiredness. So speaking of tiredness, you know, uh, lethargy. So being very, very lethargic, uh, very exceptionally tired, uh, drained of energy throughout the day. And again, this is a physical feeling, not just a, a mental or emotional one. It's a, it, you physically feel this in your body. How do I know? Because I've experienced it. I know what that feels like. Um, what else? Um, oh, you can be, find yourself irritable or grouchy for no reason. It just kind of comes on or seemingly comes on. There's always a reason underneath, but again, these are the general symptoms. Um, so find yourself irritable, grouchy, uh, um, easily annoyed, etc. What else? Um, there might be a lot of thoughts of death or even you know suicidal in ideation so the thoughts of suicide whether the person would act on them or not is another matter obviously it has a very very serious part to depression um but but sometimes people will go go the route of imagining you know how people in their lives would be better off if they weren't here and imagining scenarios where that might even kind of play out Okay. Even if they would never act on it. So thoughts of death and suicide. Um, what else? Uh, what else do I want to say here? I can't read my own writing. Oh, I guess uh, you, know, you might even experience um, physical aches and pains, believe it or not. So physical symptoms of depression. So what can we do? Well, there's, you know, there's a lot of options. So seeking out qualified um, counseling, so a therapist, a counselor, uh, psychologist, psychiatrist, etc. So there might be, um, you know, certain medicines you put on at least temporarily. You know, I, I, know, I know I've coached a lot of people that were on medication for depression and through the work we did, they were able to overcome it. Uh, so that's one option. Um, different therapies, different um, methodologies. There's, there's, many different options and so what I want to share today is some things that I've personally experienced that I've shared with other people that have made a big big difference in terms of overcoming depression now the one caveat is that I find that it if we're working on this ourselves it's best to um, implement these things when we feel the depression at the at its onset so when it starts to come on when it starts to become triggered when we're in the throes of, dep of depression, when we're in the rock bottom kind of place, it can be very difficult to implement any of this on our own. So again, this is why it's so important to actually get some professional help as well. Um, any of those, you know, any of those means, any of those types of professions that I mentioned. Um, the right coach as well can, you know, if, if they specialize in things like this, can make a big difference. Um, so what can we do ourselves? One, so I've got a list of things that I've come up with. Um, very first thing for a lot of people spending time, believe it or not, spending time in nature can make a huge difference, um, in terms of what it does in terms of the chemicals that re releases in our brain, in terms of the connection that we feel there's many uh, components to it, but spending time in nature can be critical. Um, other people, you know, it's, it's actually, this is a really fun one. It works for a lot of people is to make a list of what you like about yourself. 
Now, at first, that can be kind of hard. Some people are like, oh, I don't know, I kind of am, you know, I guess I'm kind, right? So it might be hard to come up with some of, the, some of these things. What you could do is, if you're having trouble with making that list, and I encourage that list to be very, very long, by the way, you know, dozens of items if you can find them. Once you get going, you can find them. But if, you, if you're having trouble, what you can do is, um, well, you can ask friends and family to either tell you or send you, you know, through email or text or whatever, a list of things they, they like about you. So that can be really encouraging because sometimes it helps to get that other perspective. Uh, by the way, if, you know, if, you, if you're suffering from depression or if you know somebody who may be and could benefit from this, please feel free to share this video. Um, you can type into the comments if you have questions about it. Um, okay, what else? So, you know, you know what? Something as simple as reading a good book. It can make a world of difference. It can alleviate symptoms all very, very quickly. And then you can go about other things. So reading a good book. Um, you know what? Watching a funny movie or a funny TV show, believe it or not, can, again, can make a, a big difference because of the chemical, chemicals it releases in your brain. So I, again, it alleviates symptoms. Um, taking a nice, long, hot bath. Just really, really, you know, even candle it would be nice. Maybe some nice music in the background, but a nice long hot bath for guys or girls, but it, it works for, for all of us, can make a huge difference. It can be very, very relaxing. You know, I'm reminded of a, of a saying from Jim Carrey or some, uh, uh, you know, uh, let's see what I'm looking for. Anyway, he came up with this idea or he shared this idea. I don't think it's orig originated with him. He said, being depressed is simply needing deep rest or as a way of finding deep rest. So depressed, deep rest. So that's part of what we need, right? Um, another option at certain times would be accomplishing very small tasks. Not really big things, but just small things like maybe taking out the garbage or um, you know, sending an email, a simple email or you know, straightening out, tidying up the living room, for instance. You know, it's very, very small things. Um, a really, really great one if you are, if you're an animal type person, is to play with your pet, whether it's a cat, a dog, a guinea pig, a snake, whatever. You know, spend some time with your pet because again, they 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 can really make a difference for us. Um, talking to friends and family can be very beneficial. You know, the caveat would be it's best to do that face to face, just really spending time with them, maybe sharing some of how you feel, maybe just being around them. Uh, but being, you know, and it's very hard sometimes if, if we've suffered from this um, on our own, but being willing to be vulnerable and open with it and sharing that with them, having a conversation about it. Uh, so receiving their support and their love. Uh, what else? Oh, listen to some music can make a huge difference, you know, whether it's, you know, something really soft and nice or something to even get you pumped up a little bit, something that's fun. Uh, music can, again, alter moods very, very quickly. Uh, another great one is to do something spontaneous, something you don't normally do or haven't done for a while, just jump up and do it. You know, whether it's going for a hike, whether it's, um, you know, I don't know, going for a drive, uh, playing a video game, you know, just something spontaneous in the moment. Hey, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to try this, whatever, right? Singing a song, you know, coloring, anything. Um, what else? Oh, you can seek out, you know, a really good idea is to seek out support groups. You know, why not? There's, there's, it's so common that there's groups dedicated to helping people work through depression. And so you can just be part of the group, you can share, you can receive support, whatever it might be. It can be online, it can be there's, there's you know, phone support, there's live groups, there's many, many different options that way. Um, now finally, one probably, in my opinion, at least for me, my experience and working with people, is one of the three of the most po uh, powerful modalities you can use to create change, but it takes consistency with these, um, 
And this goes back to the idea of depression being a need for deep rest. What I've found for myself and for working with people suffering from depression or it's cousin anxiety, sometimes people go back and forth. Um, the number one thing we tend to need is a sense of really deep connection in ourselves. Really deep connection in ourselves and possibly with something that higher whether you call it god or life or the universe or whatever but a deep deep sense of connection a, a feeling of coming home so three modalities that i i use every single day um, number one is journaling so, uh, specifically what i call self inquire what was called self inquiry journaling number two meditation but again it's uh what i call what was called true meditation not just a meditation app and number three, the practice of mindfulness. So self-inquiry journaling, true meditation, and the practice of mindfulness, these three things. Um, now, the practice of mindfulness has been brought into a lot of psychological models as well over the last several years. Uh, very, very effective in combating depression. Um, so because you know these are these are daily practices for me. I don't. I, I make sure to do these every single day and actually really look forward to the the self inquiry journaling, the meditation, the mindfulness. Mindfulness is a moment to moment practice throughout the day. It's something you return to over and over and over again. It's called a practice because well we have to keep practicing. We never really arrive at it at it. So we practice and practice and practice. Um, and this is where I found in my in my own coaching practice that. I, I've had the most effect with people suffering from depression or anxiety is introducing these three modalities in the correct way. A lot of people try them. They say, oh, I journal or I meditate, you know, by listening to this app or whatever. And that's fine. But I found that it's not, you know, I'm going to be honest with you, it's not really enough to overcome it. You know, it kind of works, but it's like a, it's like, you know, without proper instruction it's kind of like you know we're operating at a grade school level versus a university you have or having your doctorate in it so to speak um so very very important that we find the right instruction in these modalities once we have it then it's a tool for life and so i'm going to finish up here is that if you know somebody or if you yourself is suffering from depression whether it's clinical depression or you just feel depressed whatever uh, whether you're on medication or you're not. If you'd like some help, I encourage you to try all these things that I just listed. Um, and, and you can let me know what works, what, what even resonates with you. You can write into the comments um, or you can private message me. But if you'd like some help and if you're, whether you're seeing a therapist or a psychologist or, or, or not, um, if you want kind of some extra help, especially with those three modalities, I'm more than happy to help. I can talk one-on-one -on -one with you. We can set up a what, what's called a discovery coaching session. We can just really explore it, see if we'd even be a fit to work together. Um, again, whether you're watching this live or whether you're watching the replay on YouTube or Facebook, um, if you'd like some help, I'm here for you. So with that, you guys, this is Sean K. Carpenter from The All In Group. And I'm hoping you have a wonderful day, especially if you're dealing with that depression. Come, come see me and we'll, we'll talk about it, see if we can help alleviate those symptoms. So with that, you guys, I will look forward to seeing you soon. Cheers.